Coming up, I'm going to share early signs that you might be in a toxic work environment and then changes leaders are going to need to make for a four-day work week and then high-earning broke people. Plus, I coach you up. Let's go. All right, folks, welcome to the show where we give you the competitive edge to make more money and make more impact. This is the Ken Coleman Show. I'm Ken. I'm your coach. So if you are stuck, if you are lost, if you are where you need to be, but you want to know the steps to go further, faster, all of those are just samples of what we do when we get to our coaching session. But first, I coach you with a little locker room speech, right? We teach you five early signs of a toxic work environment. Increasingly, this is an issue. Not just an American issue, it's a global issue where poor leadership, let's just be very honest, is allowing for an unhealthy culture. It's that simple. These things don't happen by accident. Toxicity doesn't just happen by osmosis. Toxicity is a function of poor leadership and poor leadership creating or allowing behaviors that create a toxic work environment. Now, let's just also say before we dive deep into this, how I define toxic. Toxic is dangerous to your health. Let's be honest. It's not slightly difficult. Toxic is, it is dangerous. It is harmful to your mental, emotional health. Harmful maybe in creating illegal activities. It could be harmful for you if you are engaged or harmful for the company. So it's not difficult. It's not okay or just kind of blah. Don't call that toxic. All right. I hear the word thrown around too much and we need to be very clear on what it is. There's no perfect workplace because workplaces are full of imperfect people. All right. Five early signs though. I want to help you re realize, uh-oh, I made a bad decision or I've been clueless and now I'm waking up to the fact that I am in fact in a toxic environment. Number one, you can tell that something's off. Something's not adding up and this speaks to integrity. What the leaders are saying versus what they're doing is off. What they're saying doesn't come to fruition shadiness, something's off. That's what we're talking about here. This is integrity-based, and that is toxic. Number two, your coworkers are just walking around acting like zombies. You can just tell. I talked about this the other day. Our, our producer, Alex, was, was in a job interview not too very long ago for, a, for an organization, and, and in the process of the interviews, People were openly talking about, boy, I'm sure I'm glad it's Friday. Okay. <laughs> okay. That doesn't necessarily mean you're in a toxic environment, but when people are walking around and it is obvious through their language, through their behavior, that they are completely checked out. I don't mean like just kind of coasting. I mean checked out. They're there in body only. Number three. Workplace communication is sporadic at best. And when it does happen, it is confusing, contradicting. This is a sign of something toxic below the surface. I can just tell you that for a fact. Sporadic. And then when it does happen, hit or miss as to whether or not it's legitimate, confusion all of the time. And then number five, your boss shows signs of being horrible. All right, now let's pause for a second and let's unpack this. Horrible bosses. In fact, I created a term uh, called horrible bossery just because it's fun to have fun with words every once in a while. And, you know, I'm not above inventing new language or new words. Horrible bossery. The act of being a horrible boss. Now, there are two sources of horrible bossery. First, 
they're a horrible person. <laughs> you know, a horrible person will lead in horrible ways. And, and there's something deep and broken inside of them. They themselves are in an, a toxic, unhealthy place in their lives. And instead of seeking to heal through awareness, they're aware or they're unaware, but they don't care. If they're aware and they're still horrible, they don't care. If they're unaware and they've just decided to walk around in pain all the time and they openly try to be horrible through belittling you, through overworking you on purpose, through intimidating you, through manipulating you. How many of you out there watching and listening today can raise a hand and say, I know what that's like. There is horrible actions, a horrible person, and then there's horrible leadership. So we have to determine, is it because they're a horrible person or they're going through a horrible season of their life and thus it's affecting their, 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 their leadership or their communication style or how they interact? So that's one source. Are they a horrible person or going through a horrible time? The second source of horrible leadership is they just are completely inept and clueless. They've never been taught how to lead. And the reason they haven't been taught how to lead is because they probably haven't seen it modeled. See, you got to model it before you can teach it. And, and, and so that's a huge deal. So you have to understand what is at the source of this because if you have more grace and mercy for somebody who doesn't know how to lead versus the person who's actively being horrible. And then the last one, gossip is everywhere. You're beginning to see it, maybe if you're new in the role, and so now it's kind of the honeymoon season is over, and 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 gossip is all over the place. Because gossip ends up being a situation where nobody could trust anybody, everybody's backbiting, and it's not a safe environment. That's what gossip will do. So, what's the solution if you realize, uh-oh, I'm in a toxic work environment? Well, now we have to start preparing our exit plan. Start envisioning where we want to go now that we know we're in a bad environment. Update your salary expectations based on reality. Check the marketplace. Where are we at right now? Where can you go? Number two, update your resume. Make sure it is updated. Number three, reach out. Cultivate all those connections. Connections, 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 connections. Real people who you have a relationship with. And so this is a little bit of a callback to some teaching we did recently on having a job emergency plan. You realize you're in a toxic environment. Let's start to move now before it gets to emergency situation. Now, why does this matter? Why am I teaching on the signs of a toxic work environment, what you need to do? Because life is too short to be depleted and diminished. Life is too short. To work in an unhealthy environment, it will affect your health. If you don't do something about it, you deserve better. Go get it. You were created to fill a unique role in this world, but figuring out what that is can feel overwhelming. That's why we created the Get Clear Career Assessment. In less than 15 minutes, you'll get customized results that clarify and verify what you do best, the work you love, and the results you want to produce. You'll even get a list of professional possibilities to help you jumpstart the job search. To get started, go to kencoleman.com slash assessment. Coaching you up so that you have the competitive edge to make more money and more impact in your work life. This is the Ken Coleman Show. It's what we do. Why does this matter so very much? Because you spend more time at work than you do at any other place in your life. Period. Why would you want it to be... Well, why, why would you put up with it if it sucks? Why would you put up with it if it's just kind of okay? It's kind of... It's okay. 
It's like we are resigned to suck or we are resigned to average. And the reason is because we'd rather be miserable than uncomfortable. And so I've talked about this many times before. So I'm I'm here to coach you on this because you know there's more and I want to help you get there. And one of the ways that I want to continue to help you, we're very excited. We are launching a pilot of Ramsey Career Coaching. We have a wonderful roster of men and women who've been career coaches for a long time. Many of them coach executives as well. They're really, really good. They're committed to uh, the values and the methodologies of this show. And so we have a pilot program that's limited to just 30 people as we get started, kind of kick the tires and help you. Uh, you get to go deep with these coaches. I only get you five, six minutes. If you call the show, they're going to go 45-minute sessions with you. A lot more details at kencoleman.com slash coaching. kencoleman.com slash coaching. Move on this uh, because it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful investment you make in yourself. kencoleman.com slash coaching. All right, I got to get to a... Uh, a very important story as work and the landscape of work continues to change. And uh, you're not going to believe after our in the news segment, we're going to talk about high earning broke people and how you can avoid this and what gets them in that trap. So that's where we are right now. Let's go first in the news. Uh, this is a Harvard Business Review article. Now, last week, uh, or may have been earlier this week. I can't remember, folks. I'm having too much fun. It all bleeds together. But I recently reported on the show in this very segment that the largest trial of a four-day work week in history is happening right now in the United Kingdom. It's a six-month trial, and they are testing the four-day work week. And this has happened in New Zealand. I believe it's happened in Finland. Happened in several places. So, uh this is starting to gain steam internationally. And so I think it's coming to our shores as well in the U.S. Uh, because of the way the world has changed at work. But this article from Harvard, Harvard Business Review is really, really good. And for those of you that are thinking about this, uh, maybe leading it, or would you want to join a company if they eventually do this? This is a cautionary tale. Because just saying, well, you can work from home or you can have flexible work hours or you can work four days a week is not enough. Let me detail this out. In 2021, 67% of workers reported that stress and burnout had increased. So what's the big response? As I just mentioned, remote and hybrid working. We see things like unlimited paid time off. Some companies are getting headlines for saying this. Um, right to disconnect, mental health benefits, all things that are good, all things that have merit. And so this is what companies are doing. They're trying to respond to this for two reasons. One, to retain the people they have. And two, attract new people. But it's like politicians sometimes. They just promise things and throw things out. And it's a pain reliever not a problem solver so i if i if my knees hurting i'm only going to put up with that and pain relievers for so long because i want to get to the source of the knee pain i want healing not pain relieving that's just me i don't know how you are so these initiatives that i just mentioned are more on the pain relieving side and HBR does a wonderful job pointing out you can do all these initiatives, four-day work week being one of them, hybrid work, uh, all these other, pay, uh, no pay time off limitations, whatever. But if you don't deal with the source of the issue, why people are burning out at the highest rate in history, then it's not going to work. So uh, a study was done by UK Digital Futures and Work, and what they made very, very clear in their study is that the real problem of burnout is excessive workloads and intensity of work. All right? So you got people reporting stress and burnout all the time. Well, A, workload. B, the intensity of the work that you're loaded up with. All right? So this is, none of this is like, oh, wow, Ken, that's cold fusion. But in a recent study, 
Uh, in New Zealand's move to a four-day work week, research, researchers Helen Delaney and Catherine Casey found that not only was work intensified following the change, but so too were managerial pressures around performance measurement, monitoring, and productivity. So, long story short, they go to a four-day work week. They didn't change the workload or the intensity. And then the pressure on the leaders, the managers, to monitor everybody go, did you get all your work done, Alex, in your four days? Same amount of workload, less days. So it caused even more stress. So, a reduction in hours must be accompanied by a revision in the workload. And then the time at work can't be more intense and stressful than it was before. So the point is, whether it's four-day work week or hybrid model or remote working, to appease, to appease workers, it's not going to solve the problem. And the problem is intensity. The problem is too much of a workload. So just keep that in mind. Don't just get sucked in by the carrot of all these things. If the workload doesn't change and the intensity doesn't change, you're going to be more stressed out and you just think, well, I got more time to be mad about my leader. That's the point. All right. I want to show you something. We're going to play a clip here in just moments from my financial advisor talking about people that are high earners who are broke. I'm just going to show you a very quick clip and then I'm going to comment on this because this is a temptation for those of you who are trying to go after it. And there's a lesson here for all of us. Let's play that, Nathan. As a financial expert, I'm about to tell you the professions that have the highest earning poor. These are people that make a lot of money but don't have a pot to piss in. Here is the tea, dentists and doctors. These two professions kill me. And every time I see a loan request from any of these people, I mentally have to prepare myself because I know that their financials are going to be a complete joke. First of all, they have accumulated a lot of student loan debt, right? But that is not the worst part. Because they're doctors and dentists, they think they have to live up to a certain standard. So they drive the most expensive cars, live in the most expensive homes, go on expensive vacations without a thought of how this is going to affect their finances. I had a doctor that was making $750,000 a year and had $2,000 in his savings account. How does that happen? Let me break it down to you. After taxes, he was bringing home about, I don't know, $370,000 a year, somewhere around there. So that made it about $30,000 a month that he was bringing home after taxes. His student loan payments were $2,000 a month. His Bentley, $3,000 a month. His wife's Porsche, $2,500 a month. And the $3 million home that he lived in, after insurance and taxes, $15,000 a month. So that left him with about $7,000 a month for all his other- All right, so here's the deal. Okay. This is the situation where people want the big time career, but they're not willing to wait the right amount of time to get it. Doctors, lawyers, they go get the expensive degree. They go into this huge amount of debt going, well, I'm going to make a lot of money. Oh, but then they get into the, to the actual career and the lifestyle pressures, the peer pressure. So you've got debt and then perception pressure, right? I'm a doctor. I hang out with doctors, so I got to have all the things. I got to look like I belong. And here's the point. I want to remind you folks, it took me nine years to step into my dream job. Nine years. It was excruciatingly hard to wait for it. But it was worth it. So if you want to be a doctor or a lawyer, great. But don't go into crazy debt because the very thing that you love will be the thing that you resent the most because you are underneath so much debt. Folks, patience is overrated, underrated, but it is the wonder drug, the super secret sauce to winning the right way. It's okay to wait. It'll be worth it. Did you know recruiters take an average of six seconds to scan a resume? And that's if they ever see it in the first place. In fact, 75% of resumes are rejected before reaching a hiring manager. Listen, folks, if you want to get hired, you've got to make sure your resume is getting noticed. That's why we created How to Write the Perfect Resume. This free guide will walk you through the five steps to stand out in the hiring process and land your dream job. To get started, go to kencoleman.com slash resume.
right, folks, welcome back. It is time for our coaching session here on the Ken Coleman Show. You get the opportunity to uh, get coached up. And uh, if you'd like to join that, uh, you can. Two easy ways to do it. Of course, you can join us live every day, 12 Central. Uh, 844-747-2577 is the phone number. 844-747-2577. And uh, if you need to schedule a call due to your life and, and, and all of that stuff, we get that. Ask at KenColeman.com. Ask at KenColeman.com is the email address and we'll get with you. Now, if I, I'm really... Uh, I mean, we'll take all calls. We do our best to get everybody, but we have a lot of demand. But really want to focus on folks that are stuck in a really tough situation right now. And we can get to the future, but we really want to focus on the now. Uh, maybe you're dealing with a really horrible leader, a nightmare situation. Maybe you've been burned or you've had a big failure in your life and you feel like you're damaged goods. Uh, I really want to focus a lot more on some of those calls because, you know, I'm reminded uh, almost on a daily basis that, you know, people will reach out to me via social media or email. And there's so many more people that are represented than just the calls you hear. A lot of people. And some people just won't call. And so to the extent that we can dive into the messy situations, we'll protect your name, location, where you, where you work, all that stuff, so that we can help you out because a lot of people get empowerment through that. So if that's you, give us a chance. 844-747-2577. Amy is up in Kansas City. Amy, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, thank you for taking my call. You bet, Amy. What's up? Well, I have the opportunity to join a startup, and I'm just not sure if it's right for me. I'm really excited about the opportunity, but I'm also nervous. Okay, what are you nervous about? Security. Um, just if it doesn't work out, I could be unemployed at one point. Um, just, I want to be successful in it. Yeah. I want to succeed with it. Yeah. Um, very so smart, by the way. Sure. Yeah, very smart to at least be um, wary enough to go, all right, it's a startup, which means they have no track record. Yeah. And so that's natural. So instead of being nervous, I just want you to be focused to get as many answers as you possibly can. All right. And so you've got some concerns. It's okay to ask a lot of questions about those concerns. Um, and then after you get that information, which I think you probably already have, you need to sit back and go, all right, if I take this risk, what makes it a calculated risk versus a, um, crazy risk? How about that? Make sense? Yes. So what would make this a calculated risk? Is there a possibility that it's calculated? Yes. All right. Tell me what needs to be true for this to be a calculated risk so that if they go under or if they have to lay you off with along with other people because they're a startup, mm -hmm. walk me through how this could be a calculated risk for you. Well, the people who did the startup are just been in the industry for a long time. They're not just 25 and starting out a new company because they had an idea. They've been in this industry for decades right. and they really have a proven track record. Okay. So I'm not, I feel really good about the people running it. Okay. Um, and but, I don't know. I just, but let me focus. I'm, I'm not trying to focus yeah. you though. Let's okay. say that, that, that it goes wrong. Mm -hmm. That's what you're most concerned about. And, and, and by the way, yeah. I think it's the right concern. Let's say they lay you, they have to lay you off along with other people or the thing goes under because your concern was, I don't want to be unemployed and, <laughs> and stall yeah. my career or ruin my career. If they went under or if they had to lay you off, would that ruin your career? Yes or no? No. Of course not. And if they had to lay you off or if they went under and uh, you were unemployed, are you going to be under a bridge starving? Not immediately. No, not. I mean, come on. We have an emergency fund. We have money. Yeah. We, you know, we're not rich, but we. No, but you're also okay. talented. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes or no? I am. I, yeah. I have other companies pursuing me too. So of course, because you're a options. rock star. Let's be honest. You're really good at what you do, you've got talent. You, you've got experience. You wouldn't be homeless starving under a bridge unless you chose to do that. True or false? True. 
Yeah. Right then. So what you have to weigh is the risk. Mm -hmm. Let's play this out. Why? Well, take me to what is making you consider this from the positive side of things. Let's say they get this thing going and it works. What's the positive for taking this gig? Aside from just the role itself and being in on the ground floor and being able to watch this company grow, I've never taken a risk. I've never done anything but to say side, and it just feels the right time. I just feel like it's the right time to try something really new, really different. Okay. And I just love the idea of being a part of something and watching it grow, and I just, this could be it. So what I heard, let me repeat what I heard, Amy, because it's important that you hear you. Okay. What I heard was, it's the work itself, Ken. I'm interested in this because of the role. <laughs> oh, she's laughing. You're really interested in this role. This role might be a sweet spot role, or this role might be the role that gets you on the ladder to grow into your dream job, sounds like to me. Am I hearing this right? Yes, that's uh -oh. the way I feel. And then getting it on the ground floor means that you might have some stock options or some real equity or whatever, 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 and you get to grow with this thing. And that seems exciting to you. Did I hear that correctly? Yes. Did I also hear that it just feels right? You can't explain it, but you can feel it. Did I hear that too? I, I'm, I would say yes. That's, that's the trigger. If, if, yeah. No, I'm now just, stop it. You were very confident <laughs> about 60 seconds ago. You did. You feel like this is the right time to do it. Yes. If it's not now, when? If it's not now, is it ever going to happen? Feels so. pretty obvious to me, Amy. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I try not to tell people what to do. I try to inform them based mm -hmm. on what I've heard. And what I'm hearing is, is that you're not going to be um, taking on this massive, crazy risk that this will be a calculated risk. See, I like calculated risk. You know why? Because no progress happens in life without a calculated risk. But a crazy risk is crazy. Well, that's crazy. The reason why we call it a crazy risk. Because you could get hurt. You could go backwards big time financially. It could ruin your life for a season. This is not that. This is a calculated risk. And I think your body is telling you that it's time. Which, by the way, that's your heart. And your head. I like that. In alignment. See, you've done the logical stuff with your head. That's what the brain is there to do. And your heart is engaged for all of those reasons that we discussed. And now your head and heart are in alignment. And when we have a feeling, neuroscientists have proven that the gut feeling is the same thing as a logical conclusion. In fact, the feeling that we have is the body's physical response saying, yes, we should do this, or no, we shouldn't do it. So a good feeling or a bad feeling is, in fact, our brain sending a physical signal to our body to say, what you're feeling is what we should do. So I think you should okay. do it. Because here's the deal. On the other side of this risk is still going to be progress and growth. You know it and I know it. So it's an experience that may turn out to be wonderful or it's an experience that turns out to be very helpful. Wonderful or helpful. That's pretty good. If it works yeah. out, it's wonderful. Woohoo! We're really excited. Yay! If it, if it doesn't work out, we learn something from it. And now it becomes helpful for informing us for the rest of our life. So I look at this as wonderful or helpful. And if I'm financially and emotionally prepared for this risk, it's an absolute no-brainer. I do it. Because here's what's on the other side of this, Amy, if you don't do it. Regret. I want to get to the end of my journey and reminisce, not regret. You were created to fill a unique role in and through your work. Now, some of you may be going, I have no idea what that is. Some of you may be saying, 
I know what I want to do, but I don't know how to get there. I felt all of those emotions. I've been where you are, and I can tell you, there's hope. That's why I wrote the book, From Paycheck to Purpose. You can make the income you want and the impact that you desire, and I know that you have what it takes. Welcome back to the Ken Coleman Show, where I coach you up to get the competitive edge to make more money and make more impact in your work life, which is a huge portion of your life. And I want you to have meaning in it and enjoyment in it. Let's go. 844-747-2577. Karen is up in Providence, Rhode Island. Karen, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Yes, Ken. It's an honor to speak with you, Ken. Oh, that's so, so nice. The honor's all mine. What's up? Yes. And so I did an observation proximity day yesterday okay. for a dental implant sales consultant career. Nice. Which is, ve- which is a different midlife career change uh-huh. where I can impact a person's transformation as opposed to what I'm currently doing for the last 26 years as an outside sales food beverage rep where I'm in approximately 15 accounts a day. So I'm currently right now unfulfilled, lonely, no growth at my current sales role for the last eight years. Yeah. If I'm offered this position, I'm just unsure if I can be in one location all day and very nervous about this big change. Okay. Should I harness this risk? Yeah. Well, you know what? Before I answer that question, I want to ask yeah. you, based on your proximity and uh, shadowing, which I love, I'm so proud of you. I can't tell you how proud I am of you. To, but that I, was because of you. That was well, because of you because I took all the, I did the resume update. And good. My fourth, in, my fourth but, interview was the observation day. Good. Well, I'm proud of you for doing it. So when you observed and you shadowed for a mm-hmm. day, mm-hmm. how did you feel? For most of the day, did you have a good feeling about this? Did you have a, uh, or did you have a bad feeling? Those are your three options: A, good; B, eh; C, bad. No, it, it was good. It was just I, I think I was overwhelmed because there was a lot of stimuli going on. I know. Hold on. But I was really jazzed. I was really good. jazzed and good. And they actually it. said to me because I interviewed with two surgeons. Yeah. And they said, "Are you, are you always like this?" Because I seemed very. Exub- I guess you would say exuberating positive energy. Well, you because have good I, energy. I can hear it. Uh, wow, thank you. You I, have I great do, energy. And I feel like this is a long time coming. It is. So, Karen, you just answered your own question. Yeah, I just, I think that... You should it, take it. it you, so you're coming up with yeah. reasons. You're coming right. up with a reason of why you should feel not good about this because you're like, well, I've been in all these locations. Now I'm going to just be in one location. Right. I got to tell you, yeah. that is that is classic doubt trying to come up with a stupid excuse. Right. That's not right. you. That's not you. Right. You you had juice all day. The the the, right. the surgeons talked about your juice. Yeah, Here's okay. the thing. You need yeah. to put that little thing on trial. Yep. Right now, we're going to put it on trial. All right. Mm-hmm. So let's put that statement on trial. This is doubt whispering in your ear. I don't know that you can handle just being in one place all day long for the Mm -hmm. whole week. What? What? Let's put that on trial. It's kind of stupid, right? It does. If if, if I'm intellectually stimulated, I think, because I'm not intellectually stimulated currently at my field job, I'm on autopilot. Your soul has been sucked out of your body and you're lonely. Right. For 26 years, I've been on the road. 26. It's a long time. Yeah, but how so, about how about the next decade or whatever you want it to be? Right. You're encore, in an office. Encore, career. encore, but you're around people. You're making a difference. Yeah. You've already seen it and you got the juice. Karen, you said it best. Doubt, in this case, is lying to you. Doubt is stupid. You're not stupid, right. but the voice of doubt is stupid. So we've already told doubt we don't believe you. You have no evidence to back this up. Thank you, sir. Mm-hmm. Thank you. We don't need you anymore. You can leave the courtroom. And so mm-hmm. if they offer this to you, you need to take it and not think twice about it. Right. Because right. you're a people mm-hmm. person. You like being around people. You like being oh, helpful. Well, this is going to put you in an environment where, honestly, the last thing you're going to be thinking about 
is that you're in one office for most of the day. I'm in this office all day, mm-hmm. every day. Karen, I don't even leave for lunch. Thank God we got a great cafeteria here when I am able to do it. I can't today. Alex is working me like a plow horse. But yeah, when I yeah, can't right. have a, I don't leave. But guess what? From the time I walk in here in the morning until the time I leave, it goes like this. I'm not even thinking about, well, I've been in the day, I've been in the building all day. Now I think about it when I walk outside. And when I walk out this afternoon, let me tell you something, folks. Kitty Boy celebrates Friday afternoons on the golf course. I'm going to walk outside and go, man, it's gorgeous. But I wasn't thinking about that right now. I'm thinking about you, Karen, because I want to help you. Think about the people you want to help. Take this job. Do you know what you were born to do? In order to get hired at a job you love, you need to get clear on your talent, passion, and mission. That's why our team created the Career Clarity Guide. In just a few minutes, this free tool will walk you through a process to discover what you do best, talent, the work you love to do, passion, and the results you want your work to produce. That's mission. Then you're gonna feel way more confident throughout the job search process. To get started, go now to kencoleman.com slash clarity. All right, folks, welcome back to the Ken Coleman Show. If you are thinking about making a move, I want you to add to all the tools and teachings that I give you to get the right gig. I want you to add ZipRecruiter to your um, quiver of arrows, if you will. It's absolutely free. They make things a lot easier for you. Now, look, it's not all the be-all, end-all, but it does make the search really, really helpful in multiple ways, and they're going to bring opportunities to you that you don't have to sit around and think about. You could just, boom, decide, do I want to apply to this or not? And it's super easy, one click of the button. That's why I endorse them. ZipRecruiter.com. Go ZipRecruiter.com. Guy's walking in the lobby. He's got a Michigan shirt on. Go blue. Got to tell him that there. Uh, I have ADHD, so if I see anything like that that I feel like I want to respond to, I will. Uh, so there you go. Fun stuff. All right, let's get back to the phones. Austin, Texas. Courtney is on the line. Courtney, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. How's it going? It is so awesome to talk to you. Um, I went to Entree Leadership live stream three years ago. Oh. And I was like, this guy, this guy. <laughs> well, that's very so, nice, I guess. Of course, that could that. be that could have some negative. This guy, this guy. Hey, listen, I feel like the energy is evenly matched, so I don't feel like a crazy person that oh, walks into work every day. So this is exciting. This is exciting. You and I are going to be combustible right now, so how can I help? Okay, so I'm going to set the stage for you. Um, so I work for a nonprofit um, that works with kids. We've got a leadership team that consists of three of us. It's um, the executive director, administrative services director, and myself, and I'm programs and operations. Um, I started out as just programs, and then um, operations was added into my wheelhouse when, you know, hey, you're doing a great job, love, love where we're headed, this is awesome. Um, so a lot more responsibility, but, um, then I was in charge of our, you know, senior staff leadership, kind of the people who are right with kids. Um, love that. I'm definitely in my sweet spot doing that. And in this role, um, this is something I definitely see myself doing forever is coaching the leaders who are with kids. I absolutely love it. Could not be happier in that role. Okay. Um, and over the last, I'd say about year. Um, you know, as I stepped into that role a little bit more in depth, I noticed, you know, there's some safety things that can be addressed. There's some, some things that really, as an organization, you can't really let slide and that have to be addressed. Um, and as we, as a leadership team kind of met over time, I noticed that things were kind of not being addressed or kind of, Hey, we don't need to worry about that. Or that's not a big deal when, my whole career has been, you know, as soon as you see something, you're supposed to react um, and make something happen. Um, So, you know, when you go to your ED um, and they're kind of like, hey, it's not really a big deal. um, You know, we've got our board of 
directors. And there's that fine line of when do you reach out for help and how, um, because you know that a lot of these things can't go on the way they're continuing to, because we're here to do right by kids. Yeah. Um, and that's not something that you, you know, have a lot of gray area with, in my opinion, at least. Yeah. Um, so is your I question, in, is your question, my leadership is not responding they don't think it's a big deal. Yeah. I do believe it's a big deal. Do I go to the board, go above them to try to get some change? Is that the essence of your question? Yes. And I guess to kind of, you know, when you see those little red flags here and there of such and such isn't being addressed and it's something that is not life or death, but very much needs to get done quickly yeah. and efficiently, not kind of, you know, halfway. Yep. Um, where do you kind of, as being on the leadership team, it's hard when you're, um, do you other- have, let me, let me ask you this just for sake of time. Okay. Do you have the ability to address those many red flags yourself or does it require someone else in leadership to actually execute on it, to solve it? So I actually have the ability to do that, but as I brought a lot of these things up, the power has been taken away from me because other people have not wanted to address some of these things. Why? That is a great question. That you need to get question. the answer. Yes. Yes. And I don't mean like stick your finger in their face and wag your finger and come at them that way. You got to try to figure out what's going on. Is this yes. a, is this a, so here's what I mean. Is this a values disconnect where you say, this is important and urgent? And I don't mean moral. I just mean like, could be a professional thing. We go, this needs to be dealt with just for efficiency and excellence in the organization. Or this is a huge issue that could cause problems for the organization. Whatever it is. The point yes. is, you think it needs to be handled. They don't. Yes. Where's the disconnect? Is and it, I definitely... Hold on a second. Maybe, hold on a second. Is it, so you have to get this answer. And I'm not asking you to answer it now. But I, I want to make sure that I give you a a construct to walk away from this call and make some decisions, because I think this is a big deal. Because you won't be able to stay there much longer if this stuff keeps happening. Am I right? Absolutely. All right. Agree, so yeah. here's the construct. You say these are red flags that need to be addressed. On some of them, they may have agreed, but on many, they have not. And then they took away mm -hmm. your ability to execute on them. Not only did they disagree with you. They don't want you to do it. So they don't mm -hmm. think it's an issue. You've got to figure out why. Because it's going to come down to, is it style and preference? And you need to relax a little bit and decide, can I still do good work here, but have some philosophical or methodology type disagreements? Or is this a values-based thing where I can't work here because I just uh -huh. this is going to become a thing for me? Which way is it leaning? Which one is it? I would definitely think option two. And I say That's that a problem. because when you were talking about energy before, um, when you get told, hey, I think your expectations of people is too high because we're in 2022 and we're kind of dealing with, you know, just the, the bottom of the totem pole in terms of staff instead of we've got very capable people. They just need a little bit of a push and motivation. And that's my job. But if I can't do that, uh, that's where I struggle. Well, and you well, and you will continue to struggle. Mm -hmm. And so, I don't I don't want to paint with too broad a brush here. But <laughs> I have consulted nonprofits before. I have donated to nonprofits before. I have been on the board of nonprofits, so I have a unique perspective on this. Gotcha. And it has been my sad conclusion that a lot of nonprofits run this way. They are started by somebody who's a crusader, who has a massive heart and a very entrepreneurial type spirit, but they're not great at organizational leadership many times. And they lead and operate too much with their heart. And so efficiencies suffer, uh, excellence suffers, impact is happening but you get somebody like you in an organization like this, and this is a very common frustration that I have seen myself as a board member, as a donor, uh, as a friend, and they have pretty much played their hand to you. Okay. It and makes sense. I don't see it changing. Now, 
what you've got to do is make sure that you don't get burned and frustrated and get discouraged because you can do work like this in other places or you can come at this problem that you love to try to solve maybe from a non nonprofit environment. But I don't want you to walk away from this discouraged today, but I do Absolutely. want you to walk away determined to go, this may not be the right environment for me and I need to do the hard work to absolutely get confirmation, but not let the environment discourage me from the outcome that I desire to create and I can go find other ways to drive that outcome. Do you understand what I'm saying? Absolutely, because all of the things that you said about you know, a crusader and where their heart is is exactly the situation. I mean, like you painted that perfectly. Yeah, well, unfortunately, I've seen it. And uh, mm -hmm. so here's here's the sad part. Um, but maybe the nudge that you need. They're not going to change. It doesn't sound like. You can have one more sit down with them and go, hey, where's the rub here? All I want to drive is, I think it's probably worth to have a final. You don't have to tell them it's final. But it might be your final conversation where you really get to the bottom of where the disconnect is. Because it's possible that you're frustrated and that you're not giving them enough grace. You're not working it from different angles. But it's on you to figure this out, and I know you will. Hey, before I go, you matter. You have what it takes. Press on. Thanks for listening to The Ken Coleman Show. For more, you can find the show on demand wherever you listen to podcasts and watch the show on YouTube. You can also find Ken across all social media by following at Ken Coleman.